So, uh, <clears throat> I want to continue today in our series called Are You Saved? And this today is number six. So, last time you may remember uh, that we were saying that some people mistakenly believe that they are saved because they go to church. Now, going to church is a good thing. How many people think that going to church is a good yep. thing? Yes. How many people believe that going to church is a bad thing? Oh, it's a good thing. Depends on the church. <laughs> How many people believe that coming to this church is a good thing? Yes. But going to church <clears throat> doesn't save us. The reason that we go to church is because we are saved. Going to church doesn't save us. We, are, <clears throat> we go to church because we are saved. Today, I want to talk about those who mistakenly believe that they're saved because they believe in a God. <clears throat> you could say <clears throat> that some people mistakenly believe they're saved because they believe in God. You could say they believe in our God. Or you could say, quite simply, they believe they're saved because they believe in God. But <clears throat> I would say that most people believe in our God. I would say that most people believe in God. But <clears throat> what <clears throat> or who is the God that they believe in? That's the thing, isn't it? What or who is the God that they believe in? For the Hindu, <coughs> Brahman is God. For the Muslim, <coughs> Allah is God. For the Buddhist, Vajrapani, Manjusri, and Avalokitsavada are God. For Many of the Tangata Whenua, for the Māori in New Zealand, <coughs> Io is their God. How many people have heard of that? <coughs> Io. Yeah. So, uh, Tangata Whenua, Māori legend, uh, believe that they have one supreme God, and his name is Io. And, uh, <clears throat> but Io does not have a son called Jesus Christ. Io, Io uh, has Io's, uh, Io's uh, children, uh, Ranganui, who is a male god of the heavens. And uh, Io has a daughter called Papatuanuku who is the female god of the earth. So here you can see the statue, this is an idol of Io. And these are Io's children, Ranganui and Papa Tuanuku. So talking about, <clears throat> how many people enjoy singing our national anthem? God of nations, at thy in the bonds of love we meet. It's a wonderful national anthem. And of course there are many in New Zealand who are trying to remove it because <clears throat> the whole national anthem is a prayer to God. But I want to give you a little bit of a caution <clears throat> about singing our national anthem in Te Reo. Because when we sing the national anthem in Te Reo, we are not sending out, we are not making a prayer to the God that we know and worship, who is the one God, sovereign creator of heaven and earth, and who is revealed in his son, Jesus Christ. But in Toreo, we, we don't sing God of nations. We sing, Ehoa, Atua, So when we sing e oha, atua, atua is not the one true sovereign God that we worship. 
the Christians worship. Atua are the Maori gods of folklore and legend. So when I want to encourage you, if you're singing the national anthem in uh, Te Reo, don't sing a oha atua. Because what you're doing is you're <coughs> worshipping and praising and sending up a prayer to the Maori gods of legend. They were saying, Ehoa, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Better to do that. <clears throat> and for the <clears throat> trendy Westerner, for the trendy Westerner, <clears throat> for many of the trendy Westerners, their own higher power is their God. And for many, <clears throat> many see that the universe is God. How many people, you've heard that a lot, you hear that a lot, people talking about the universe, or the universe is, yeah, the energy, and the universe has done this, and the universe has done that, and maybe the universe is going to be kind to me this year, and they're putting their trust in their higher power, all these things. <clears throat> but what is it that sets apart the Christian belief in God from all these other so-called gods? Well, Christians believe that there is only one God. There is only one God. And he has only made himself known to us in Jesus Christ, who is himself God. Amen? Amen. And uh, there are so many scriptures that I could give you, but I'm only going to give you one. Titus 2 and verse 13 says that we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. Hallelujah. Amen. It couldn't be much clearer than that. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus himself said in John 10 verse 30, The Father and I are one. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Father and I are one. So why is it essential to believe that there is only one God and that he has only made himself known to us in Jesus Christ, who is himself God? Wouldn't it be just a whole lot easier to say, well, you know, <clears throat> Muslims believe in God, uh, Hindus believe in God, just about everybody believes in God. Why isn't it just easy to say that? Well, because we can only be saved by believing that Jesus Christ is God. <clears throat> you can't be saved by simply believing in God or simply believing in a God. Believing in a God or believing in God does not save you. If somebody says to you, sure, I believe in God, that doesn't mean that they are saved. <clears throat> we are only saved by believing that Jesus Christ is God. John 8, verse 24, Jesus himself said, Unless you believe that I am who I claim to be, you will die in your sins. <clears throat> That's why the gospel is not very popular. Because the gospel is very exclusive. Salvation is only for those who believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour and God. And we cannot be saved by believing, by saying we simply believe in God. I want to give you some statistics from a survey <clears throat> that is conducted every two years in America by a ministry called Ligonier Ministries. And the results of that survey are always really interesting. And uh, I'm sure that the results would also apply uh, to us here in New Zealand. One of the results in that survey found that 68% of those people who were surveyed believed in God. So as Christians, we would go, yay, isn't that wonderful? You know, 
so many Christians around because they believe in God. But the survey asked another question. <clears throat> uh, did you believe that Jesus Christ was God? And 68% said they believed in God. But they also said they did not believe that Jesus Christ was God. That is really telling, isn't it? Very, very interesting. How many and percent of this uh, 68 uh, believed that Jesus Christ is God? They did not believe that. They believed in God, but they did not believe no, that no, Jesus no, Christ. 68. Yeah. So, um, they did not believe that Jesus Christ was God. Although they said they believed in God. So, no doubt, those 68% mistakenly believed they were saved because they believed in God. They are mistaken. <clears throat> At the conclusion of the survey, Ligonier Ministry said this, These results reveal an urgent need for clear biblical teaching on the person of Christ. Amen? I'm sure we could all say amen to that. Amen. There is much work to be done in this age of confusion, but we hope the findings of the survey will serve the church in its calling to reach more people with the faithful proclamation of God's word. Amen. Amen. We must preach the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord warns us not to believe in other so-called gods. The prophet Isaiah recorded the word of God. Isaiah 44 verse 8. There is no other God. I am the only one. Dear friends, there is only one God. And he has revealed himself to us in his Son, Jesus Christ, who is himself God. Do you believe that? I believe it. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. I believe it. Furthermore, let me say that we must be careful not to compromise our belief in the deity of Christ in an attempt to appease people who believe in God or believe in our God but do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. Let, let me remind you that there is salvation in no other name than in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is salvation in no other name. Just because somebody says they believe in God doesn't mean they're saved. There is salvation in Jesus' name alone. Brahman cannot save you. Allah cannot save you. The Buddhist gods cannot save you. The, the mythical god of the Tangna Whenua, Io, cannot save you. A higher power cannot save you. And the universe cannot save you. Let me remind you that when we gather together, as we do on Sundays, and as we are again today, as we honour the name of Jesus, His presence will be with us. Glory to God. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three have gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Praise the Lord. Let me remind you that when we honour the name of Jesus, we will see the power of God in our midst. We will see miracles. How many people here are candidates for a miracle today? I would love to see the power of God, the miraculous healing, delivering, saving power of God in our midst. Jesus talked about in Matthew 9, 39, he talked about those who will perform miracles in his name. Miracles are performed in the name of Jesus. Somebody give me an amen. amen. Let me remind you that when we honor the name of Jesus, our prayers will be answered. Amen. Praise God. I just want to talk briefly about something that 
really annoys me. Sometimes I'll, when you're out and about and doing things and at, you know, meetings or whatever, or different things through the years, have you ever noticed, <clears throat> quite often, when someone is praying, they, they might pray a prayer like, um, Lord, I ask you for this or whatever, whatever, and thank you, God, Amen. Let me tell you that those prayers will never be answered. Never. Why are so many prayers unanswered? Because we forget to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I've heard it so many times. And the reason that Christians will do that is because they don't want to offend anybody by mentioning the name of Jesus. So in a mixed group of people, sometimes we're praying, we'll go, Ooh, we don't want to upset people. You know, maybe there's some people here from a different uh, tradition, or maybe there's somebody here who's not a Christian. So we better pray, we'll pray to God. Amen. And the name of Jesus is completely left out. And the reason is because they don't want to offend people by praying in the name of Jesus. But dear friends, I always pray in the name of Jesus because I want my prayers answered. Amen. Amen. I will never pray a prayer, dear God, please, please, whatever, whatever. Amen. I will never do that because I know that my prayers will never be answered. Jesus said, in uh, John 14, verse 14, you can ask anything in my name and I will do it. You can ask anything, but there is a condition, in my name. So if I pray, Father, you know, even for the highest, noblest, greatest cause, if I pray a prayer, and I finish it, thank you God, amen. God will not answer my prayer. But he will answer it if I pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Let me remind you that when we honour the name of Jesus, our evangelism will be effective and powerful. When God called Paul, and later he became the great apostle Paul, the Lord sent a man by the name of Ananias to lay hands on Paul that he would be healed of his blindness because the Lord had struck him down. The Lord had blinded him. And he sent a man called Ananias to lay hands on Paul and commission him. And the Lord said to Ananias in Acts 9 verse 15, The Lord said to him, Go, for he, that is Paul, is a chosen instrument of, of mine to what? Bear my name. Hallelujah. He is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. What is that name? It is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Paul had the most incredible ministry. For 30 years, he faithfully proclaimed the name of Jesus wherever he went to the Gentiles, to kings and to the sons of Israel. He didn't compromise. He didn't appease the unsaved or the religiously inclined or the Jewish religious leaders or you know, the Romans or anybody or the pagan Gentiles. He didn't appease anybody. He went in there and he boldly spoke out. He boldly proclaimed the name of Jesus, higher than any other name. And men and women were saved, and the Roman world came to its knees because of the ministry of the great Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul was no different to you and I. What was different about him? Nothing. I take a lot of heart from the Apostle Paul. I'll tell you why, because... He said about himself that he was a lousy speaker. And I always say that about myself a lot. My internal, my internal talk is, and, and I quite happily admit, I'm not a good communicator. 
But I tell you what, I love preaching the gospel. And I love teaching the Bible. And the name of Christ for me is above every other name. And I don't care if I stumble and, and make mistakes and stuff. But I take a lot of heart from the ministry of the Apostle Paul. He was short. He wasn't well spoken. But the power of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit was on him. Because he honoured the name of Jesus. And he preached the gospel. Somebody give me an amen. amen. Let me remind you that when we honour the name of Jesus, we are exercising our faith against satanic opposition. Let me remind you, dear friends, that we are living in very difficult days. We are living in difficult days. No doubt. And here in New Zealand, we are under tremendous pressure not to meet. We are under tremendous pressure to stay at home and to sit in front of the computer and watch somebody on the internet doing a service or whatever. We are under tremendous pressure not to meet. Not to pray, not to come together. We are under tremendous pressure like never before. But we need to preach and proclaim and hold up the name of Jesus like never before. In 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1, Paul said, In the last days, it is going to be very difficult to be a Christian. It's going to be very difficult. And it is difficult now. Let me remind you, when we eventually appear in heaven, the Lord himself will commend our faithfulness to his name. Revelation 2 verse 13, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name, and did not deny my faith. On that day, when we eventually appear before him, the Lord will commend us, for holding fast to his name. Praise the Lord. Finally, let's honour the name of Jesus today, our great and glorious God. Hebrews 13 verse 15. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Salvation is in His name. Amen. Are you saved, dear friends? Amen. Are you saved? Amen. Salvation is in His name. In His name alone. There is salvation in no other. No other name. No other God. It is in Him and in Him alone. Glory to His name. Father, we thank you for your blessing. Amen. Father, we thank you for the busy season that we're in at the moment. Father, we thank you for the tremendous way that Pastor Terence and Shalom hosted us in their home on the 19th. And then following that tremendous job they did organising everything. Thank you, Father, for Henry hosting us at his property uh, last Sunday. Father, it's been a very busy time. It's been wonderful. We've been together, we've been celebrating uh, the Lord, we've been celebrating our salvation. Father God, we thank you, Father, for every blessing you pour out upon us. And Father, we thank you, Lord, this is the first Sunday of 2022. How are we going to start the year? Are we going to live it out compromised? Are we going to just live it out by just carrying on our lives? Uh, as usual and, and nothing changes. No, we're going to live our lives honouring the name of Jesus. We're going to put him first and foremost, high and above all else and all other things. Father, we're going to be here Sunday by Sunday by Sunday by Sunday. We're going to be here enjoying the presence of God in our midst. Father, we will not be shut down. We will not be quieted. We will not be hushed up. We will not be muzzled. We will not be told to shut up and sit down and be quiet and sit in the corner while the world runs over the top of us. Father, we will be strong. We will be men and women of God. 
and we will march in 2022 strong and victorious, powerful, mighty, and filled with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name.